season two of the new Bronx Edulution. We've got something great in store for you. I'm Timothy Coleman, Director of Education for BronxNet and your host for the show. Our rich history and culture are rediscovered through the stories of community members who take pride in our borough while sharing their journey towards success. Get ready to be uplifted and entertained. Me and the crew welcome you to the brand new Bronx Edulution. What's up, Bronx? My name is Timothy Coleman. I am the Director of Education here at BronxNet. I'm also your host for the Bronx Edulution. Thank you for joining us today. If you've been watching our show, then you know during this season, we've had some pretty cool episodes. We've talked about faith, perseverance, charity, and today we're gonna to be speaking about integrity. Now, integrity is defined as being a person of high moral character, right? But what does that really mean? My father used to say that integrity is an all day choice. You don't just pick it up when you feel like it and lay it down when you feel like it. One of the challenges that I always had growing up as a kid is I felt like in all of the media that I was seeing and the different types of songs and things that I was hearing, uh, integrity felt like something that people chose only when they were gonna be in front of a camera. And then when you would read autobiographies and you would read biographies and you would hear some of the other stories uh, that people, of, like different things that were happening in people's lives, you're like, okay, wait a minute. These two pictures don't match up. That's what they uh, say is like when you're talking out of both sides of your mouth, right? So integrity to me really just means you're gonna do everything that you know is right, no matter who's looking, whether there's a camera on or not. So if you are, let's say, just starting out on a new job, you get your training, you understand some of what's happening, you don't understand some of the other stuff, you're just like, okay, I'll wing it, right? And you don't always move in a spirit of excellence. Moving in a spirit of excellence sometimes is not what you're gonna see from the people that are standing next to you. Uh, sometimes it's not what you're going to witness from other people that you might look up to in the community, but it is something that other people who look up to you are gonna notice. When we come back, we are going to have an amazing interview with one of our associate producers here at BronxNet, Mr. Stephen Powell, and we've got so much, so much more in store. We'll be right back. What's up, Boogie Down? Welcome back. So every week uh, when we do our show, we have an opportunity to introduce you to someone who is working here at BronxNet behind the scenes. And it is such a joy for me for all of you to get to know the people that we see on a daily basis. One of the things that I firmly believe, and I say this quote all the time, is that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And for every citizen, every community member who is coming in to learn about TV production and work with us here at BronxNet. We uh, introduce you to all of these different folks, but now is gonna be your opportunity to meet them before some of you even choose to sign up for a class. So today, I'm very pleased to have with us a, a gentleman who is an associate producer on our show, Open. His name is Stephen Powell, and I would like you to give a warm Bronx welcome to Mr. Powell. Come on over, my brother. Tim. How you doing, man? How you doing, man? Thanks so much for being here with us. Thank you All so right. much for having me. 
Yeah, no problem, no problem. So every time we talk to somebody, we like to get a little backstory before we talk about like their work and how you help support all the things that are happening here at BronxNet. Right. So can you give us a little bit about yourself, like born and raised, family makeup, that yeah. kind of thing? So yeah, um, I was not born and raised, well I was born, raised here in the Bronx, but I was not born in the Bronx. I was born in Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. Uh, and so I was raised here over 30 years of my life and um, 31 years old. I, I went to school in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. I again was raised in the Bronx. I went to a uh, all guys Catholic school, Mount St. Michael Academy. I went to college outside for undergrad of uh, New York City, mm -hmm. Fairfield University completed my um, undergrad in sociology, um, marketing, and then while well, went on, worked in education for a little bit, and also um, decided to go back to school in 2016, where I got my master's degree in communications and multi-platform uh, journalism. Actually, one of the uh, radio uh, directors at WFEV Radio at Fordham University, where I completed my master's, had a relationship with someone who was near and dear to a lot of us here at BronxNet, former um, director for creative services, Marissa White. She's no longer here with us. Um, you know, may she rest in peace. But um, I met her when I was in one of my courses uh, through the, one of the heads of WFUV Radio, Robin Shannon. Mm -hmm. She gave a little kind of introductory talk, talking about her career, talking about her life and kind of the things that she really, you know, aspired to as a media professional, kind of uh, resonated with my spirit as far as the things that I wanted to do. And so um, also one of my classmates was an intern as a reporter here at Bronx and at TV. I'll never forget her, Tatiana Parrish, um, in 2017. And then I um, immediately came in with uh, kind of vigor. She really encouraged me to, you know, do something. She was like, hey, have you done any internships yet? You know, you're doing these classes. You're, you're kind of in the flow of things. But what, what's the next step for you? So mm -hmm. um, around January of uh, December of 2018, I did an interview. Um, with one of our great HR professionals here, Chanel, and, and you know, here I am, five years later. That's dope, that's dope. So I say where you're from and you tell me, you know, everything that goes into a good mac and cheese. All right, so I'm gonna break it down for the folks, because uh, there's a couple of really cool yeah. things that you, that you said in there, right? The mm -hmm. first thing was, what was it like and how did it impact your choices um, as you were coming up and you went to an all, all boys Catholic school. Right. Like High what school. kind of impact did that have for you? Well, um, so I was somebody that was very kind of insular uh, growing up. I, my dad wanted to make sure that I got that kind of rugged kind of um, athletic experience that every father wants for their kid, yeah. their son specifically. So. Um, Mount is known for their athletics. So I would say my father also wanted me to be uh, an athlete. Yeah. And so I found my path through musical theater, thank mm. God, because I ran one track meet and had an asthma attack. And we knew that that was kind of like <laughs> all that was going to happen <laughs> on that level. So good for right. you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, no. I, um, so going to Mount, I didn't do a lot of my athletics in terms of the introductory. I, I, so I did about 10 years in martial arts. Mm -hmm. In the process of that, I gained a love for basketball. You know, if you see me in the hallways here, you'll see me talking to the guys about sports, NBA, football. Then, you know, at Mount, I tried out for their, their football team. Um, I played football for um, where I li have lived for years, Co-op City. Mm -hmm. And then eventually kind of just in that process, the athleticism, the kind of wanting to be the best version of myself in that realm kind of transitioned to the classroom mm -hmm. where I really excelled. And so I think it was more of a holistic learning experience coming from a, a Catholic school in the archdiocese and then eventually, like I said, going off to Kasha, a Jesuit university in a kind of well-rounded private institutionalized education, wanting to kind of be more of just then doing athletics, athletics and, you know, kind of delving myself into every aspect mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. being a well-rounded uh, person, not just a student. So, I think that's totally dope. I think yeah. that's totally dope. So, you know, we, so you came in to BronxNet mm -hmm. as an intern mm -hmm. 
And how long have you worked here? I've been here since 2018, five years. So yeah. in five years, right? And now you're an associate producer of a show. Yep. Right, so we have a lot of uh, high school as well as college interns that come through. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if your high school is uh, looking to have a, a location for mm -hmm. your interns, this is definitely, you know, give us a call. This is obviously a place where you can see through Steven's experience that you get a chance to like continue to learn and grow uh, with our organization. You came in as an intern. Did you immediately see what you wanted to do or were you like testing out a bunch of different you know, positions and types of things? So yeah, um, like I said, I knew that I wanted to do something in media, but I had kind of been fumbling through the dark, kind yeah. of trying to get a feel for things. I, I initially wanted, I, I entered into this uh, space as an intern in the reporting um, realm of things in front of the camera. Uh, okay. Um, obviously doing things behind the camera now, but uh, yeah, no, I wanted to do something that would land me in a position that I could tell stories and also be uh, somebody that uh, was a part of a team and yeah. uh, in a collaborative effort into making great TV. So um, eventually the idea was proposed to me by, again, the Garris of Soul, but uh, Marissa, um, she approached me, I believe, I think March or April of 2019 with uh, just a suggestion or mm -hmm. an idea. It was like, hey, have you ever thought of producing? I said, no. And I was the quickest no I've ever said <laughs> in my life. Because right. I was like, why would you suggest that? You know, right. I, I'm doing this reporting thing because eventually, uh, I didn't mention this early, but my sports background kind of gleaned an interest in working in sports, television, eventually. But I, I wanted to do it from the sidelines or as a reporter. Nice. But I didn't know that I would do that in another way or a capacity. I didn't see any other way to do it than the way I thought entering into BronxNet, that's the way I was gonna do it. But Eventually, sometimes, yeah. You, but sometimes that's what a mentor is for, yeah. right? Like sometimes people come into our lives and they say something to us and it's just a sprinkle of a little seed and then all of a sudden this whole entire world opens up, right? right? So now progress a little bit for us and, and you're an associate producer and what is it that you actually do? What, do, right. what does that entail? Right, so, um, Officially uh, full-time producing here with BronxNet, um, working on our, our Open Monday series, our Open Monday, which is a part of the Open series. There's mm -hmm. Open Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'm, I'm one of the four producers for the Open series, producing with Dr. Bob Lee on our Open Monday, which, as aptly named, is produced and taped every Monday. And our show is something that we highlight education, which is near and dear to Bob's heart. And I'm yeah. sure you've, you've- He's amazing. I think yeah, everybody yeah. should be watching yeah, it. Yeah, Dr. Think he's, Bob Lee I can't incredible. wait to interview him one day. Like he's totally amazing. Bob is incredible. His whole thing is um, giving others or providing, facilitating others to helping give back and getting helping people to get what they need out of life mm -hmm. is something that's near and dear to, dear to his heart. Mm -hmm. I think we have kind of that same philosophy or mantra on life. So um, what I do is I, I I book guests, I um, map out the show, what we call run, create rundowns for the show. I um, collect assets, headshots, mm -hmm. social media handles to basically carve out the, the skeleton of an entire show, which it's a one hour program, 59 minute program. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we break it down into segments. So we do up to, or upwards of four or five, at most maybe six um, interviews per, per show. And um, we goodness. get really, really interesting people in different, varied um, disciplines across the spectrum in New York, in, in New York State. Mm -hmm. I don't even, you know, I know we're called, um, you know, Bronx Net, but we we get people in the Bronx and Queens, and, and throughout the city. You know, people that are making um, an impact, people that are um, shaping our futures, and also. Yeah people across various disciplines, film. And but I mean, so it is so in our mission, like the Bronx right. and beyond, right? right. So as long yeah. as the, the information is relevant to the Bronx, right. then I think it's totally fair right. that the people can come from anywhere around the world, right. right? I mean, once we put stuff up on YouTube, you don't know who's gonna see it. <laughs> Folks in Switzerland are probably like, ah, oh, I love the Bronx, you right. know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, you never know. Exactly. So we've been talking today on the show mm -hmm. about integrity. Right. How does that word and, and its definition kind of move you through life? Uh, how do you respond to that word integrity? Integrity is something that I've uh, growing up as I'm, I, I post on my, my social media. I always have the tagline man of faith. 
Integrity is more than just an act. It, it, it's more than just a, a tagline. It's a, it's a daily walk. It's a daily action. It's a repetition. It's a practice. It's a habit for me. Um, something that I, I take near and dear to me because of the way that I was brought up um, by my, my mother and father and my grandmother. Um, and just the way that I, I kind of carry about the way that I go about doing this job mm -hmm. um, in terms of just treating people with the level of respect and integrity that I would want reflected for myself and reciprocated for myself. Nice. I think that's something that's really important for me, just going about doing the, a, an honest work, not cutting corners, right, um, right. treating people the way that you want them to be treated. The editing process, anybody that knows as a producer, there's a lot of editing that goes into it. We have editors, but you know, working alongside them, helping them make their jobs a lot easier. If I, for say, have to edit a full show by myself, not cutting, uh, cutting corners in terms of, um, you know, I don't feel like adding that photo. I don't feel like crediting that photo source. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I don't feel like adding that video because, you know, it'll help make the job a lot quicker, <laughs> right, expedite right. the process of getting that show but to programming. following all the steps, following in the structure the to make sure that you right. come out with the highest quality possible, right. right? My father used to say that, you know, integrity is an all day choice, right? You don't just pick it up at random and lay it down whenever you feel like it. Mm -hmm. It is something that you carry with you as a badge. And so, you know, I thank you for, for being here with us today because you've given us a lot of insight. You know, I think folks think about BronxNet and they say, oh, well, you know, it's only about, you know, being a cameraman or being in front of the television. <laughs> There's so many other positions. So, you know, these interviews are really to give you some insight into that. So, Stephen, thank you so much for being here. Congratulations on the show. It's very successful. Please Appreciate give you. Dr. Bob Lee my love and respect. And uh, we'll be back with you in just a moment. The Bronx Edulution. We are Bronx Strong. Hello. It's Mr. John here, reading Amanda Bean's Amazing Dream, a mathematical story. Story by Cindy Neuschwander. Pictures by Liza Woodruff. Amanda Bean's Amazing Dream. I am Amanda Bean and I love math. I know all about counting. I am very good at it. I can count by ones, twos, fives, and tens. I can add up anything. The kids at school call me Bean Counter. Hey, what are you counting, Bean Counter? They yell. Anything and everything, I yell back. I just like to know how many. I count every day, even when I am on my way home from school. Now we are learning about multiplying. I understand many things about multiplying. I know that it is like adding lots of things quickly. This is good. I know about the multiplication sign. It means that things can come in groups or rows or columns. This is also good. What I do not know are the multiplication facts. My teacher says it is important to learn these. I am not so sure. I think I can just keep counting. I tell my teacher this. He agrees, but he says counting is a longer way to find the same answer. I think about this when I get home. I think about this as I eat a snack in our kitchen. I look at the tile countertop. The countertop, I say. I must count these tiles. I notice there are 12 columns of tiles. There are 12 tiles in each column. It is a long time before I count all 144 of them. I am a man to be, and I like to work quickly. Maybe multiplying would be faster. I walk to the library to check out a book. 
one bookcase has seven shelves and nine books on each shelf. I am a man to me, and I count anything and everything. I start counting. I finally figure out that there are 63 books in the bookcase. I am happy to know this, but now the library is closing. It is too late for me to look for a book. Maybe I should learn to multiply. Maybe it would make counting easier. I am still thinking about this when I go to bed. I am very tired, but my mind just will not quit thinking about numbers. Once, when I could not sleep, my mother told me to count sheep. I stayed awake all night counting them. The next morning, I had 6,727 sheep in my head. I do not think counting sheep is for me. Tonight I will think about riding my bike. This is simple. There are only two wheels, two pedals, one seat, and one of me. I will imagine a quiet ride in the country, I whisper to myself. I can see the rolling hills, the big trees, and the green grass. This is relaxing, I say as I begin to nod off. I am pedaling along a quiet back road. The sun is shining. A gentle breeze is brushing against my face. This is relaxing. Then I notice something. It looks like eight bicycles with sheep on them. How many wheels is that? I wonder. I start counting. But the sheep whiz by so fast, I cannot count all the bicycle wheels. Wait, I yell. I am a man to bean, and I count anything and everything. I decide to follow them. I have to know how many wheels have rolled by me. Then I wonder, how many legs do those sheep have all together? Now I really must catch up with those woolies on wheels. I really must know how many. I pump harder, I breathe harder. Up the hill they go, up the hill I go. Around the bend they go, around the bend I go. The sheep stop at a barn and get off their bikes. I get off my bike too. I do not stop to count the wheels. I follow the sheep. They go into the barn. I go in too. They reach into their fleecy pockets. Each sheep pulls out five balls of beautiful yarn. Oh no! I cry out. Now I must count the yarn too. I am Amanda Bean and I count anything and everything. First it was wheels, then it was legs, now it's balls of yarn. I cannot believe my eyes at what I see next. Seven grandmas come marching in with two knitting needles each. They take the yarn from the sheep and start knitting sweaters. This dream is getting too crazy. Now I must add knitting needles to my list of things to count. And each sweater has two arms. Should I count them too? The grandmas st start wrapping up all the sweaters around me. Stop, I tell them. How can I count all the arms and the sweaters and all the knitting needles and the balls of yarn and the sheep's legs and the bicycle wheels if I am all wrapped up. Multiply, bleep the sheep. Multiply, bleep the sheep. Multiply, multiply, multiply. 
chance for grandmas. Multiply? I asked. I am a man to be, and I count anything and everything, I say. Multiplying is counting, say the grandmas. It is just a fast way of counting. Yeah, agree the sheep. I wake up to find my mother wrapping me in her arms. I had an amazing dream, I say. It was a noisy dream, my mother says. Today, I will start to learn the multiplication facts, I announce. They are important to know if you want to find out how many, and you need to know fast. My mother agrees. I am Amanda Bean. I still love knowing how many, but now I multiply anything and everything, and I never count sheep. Amanda Bean's Amazing Dream, a mathematical story. See you next time. The Bronx Evolution. We are Bronx Strong. What's up, Bronx? Thanks so much for joining us for this episode of the Bronx Edge Illusion. We're so grateful that you, of all the things that you could be doing, you chose to give us your attention. Today's show was all about integrity, which just means having a strong moral character, working and performing in excellence no matter who's watching. Don't wait for the camera to turn on to be giving your best, to be doing what you know is right. Doing, what, doing what's right is something that we can all make the choice of happening at any time. We also wanna thank our special guest, Mr. Stephen Powell, associate producer for Open Mondays. And we hope that you tune into that show as well after you watch this one. Thank you so much. Me and the crew wanna thank you for watching The Bronx Edulution.